movie shown in this video cassette constitute a mini documentary of a portion of World War II. Events depicted here occurred at the number three British Flying Training School operated by the Spartan School of Aeronautics at Miami, Oklahoma, United States of America. The films were taken by the narrator. I am Leon W. Schrader. My tenure at number three BFTS was as flight instructor from February 1942 till August 1945. So these home movies have been added to transferred to this video tape for convenient showing. Here we see a wings parade. This was taken in the latter part of the period after American Army Air Corps cadets were introduced into the curriculum here as part of the student cadet body. So this parade is prior to the awarding of the wings, the graduation ceremony upon completion of advanced training. One of my students here has his wings pinned on by the wing commander. And here is the narrator in his youth with some of his flying cadets. And so here we go again. Since that time I've certainly added quite a few years, a few pounds, and lost some hair. Unfortunately, flying training involves accidents. And here one of the AT-6s is being hauled away for the scrap heap or perhaps to the salvage yard. A view from the control tower at the main airport, the AT-6 is taking off in formation. Formation here is rather loose. The formation will be tightened up once some altitude is gained. Not too bad. Instructor George Weblemo climbing out of the rear cockpit. George with one of his students. We were in primary training together and went to advanced training. One of my American cadets. Quite happy to have successfully completed this flight without damage to the aircraft or to himself. And so I am congratulating him, therefore. And he's still happy about the whole thing. American cadet. And I believe the British cadet on the right was from Ireland. Obviously there is a difference in them, in their salutes, their flying gear, and their accents, which certainly are not shown or not heard on this particular film. So when the flight program was well along, a new procedure was adopted. And there were some pros and cons about this procedure. Student, pilot, and navigator cross-country. Many people were opposed to it and their fears appeared to be justified when on the first day of such student pilot cross countries two aircraft collided head on over Kansas four cadets were killed they now lie buried in the Miami Oklahoma Cemetery along with some of their comrades who lost their lives at the flight school and indeed uh, part of England is now in Miami Oklahoma so here the American pilot and the British student navigator taxing out for the student navigator cross country. Instructor Ray Johnson with some of his students. And coming up are flight instructors of George Webb Lemo's flight. There's George Morgan Stern next to him, myself, Weibel, Tom Wilson, and in the background Buford Barnum, Carl Chambers, the girl who was our dispatcher, George Webb Lemo on the far left. Clifford Pitts, considered by many to be among the, one of the best pilots in the school, pointing out Buford's big feet. Unfortunately, Clifford and a student were killed in a fatal crash on approach to number two field on December 17, 1944. There is the narrator. Next to him, Harold Morgenstern and Bill Donahue. And since I took this group photo, I'm not in the scene, but we see the members of A flight. Morgan Stern in the lower right there, Donahue on the far right, and the flight instructors marched by in parade. Carl Chambers later went to TWA, Buford Barnum, Webb Lemo, Clifford Pitts coming up here, and Flight Commander Donahue again. 
George Webb Lamoe with some of his students. We called him Wobble Pump, based on the device used in the PT-19, of course, to start the fuel flowing prior to starting the engine. Unfortunately, I didn't take too accurate records when these films were made. I can't identify many of the faces. Perhaps when this film was shown in the Royal Air Force Museum in London, or at the 3BFTS reunion in London in May of 1984. Many people will recognize themselves on this film. I hope there will be many there. I'm receiving salutes from some of my students here, and that I can then identify them for future commentaries for this film. In any event, all who see it and do identify themselves, I hope they enjoy it as much as I am enjoying this narration. Most of the American students had had an opportunity to drive an automobile. Another one of my class here. There's Vincent Tennant. Vincent Tennant is now an engineer with Piper in Vero Beach, Florida. He took some air-to-air -air gunnery films in the course of his instruction, and they have been appended to the end of my movies. And you will see them coming up in a few moments. As I was saying, most of the British students did not have the opportunities mechanically to drive automobiles, say, as did the Americans. Many of these British cadets had never had a foot on a brake until they climbed into the cockpit of an airplane. And I'm constantly amazed at the success of these people in learning to fly. 17 and 18 year old kids, of course, wars are always fought by the young. But no mechanical training to speak of, very little aptitude. They did a wonderful job. I was indeed proud of them. I'm still proud of them. I'm proud to have been a part of the war effort and my slight contribution in the instructions given here. All work and no play makes Jack a dull boy or John Bull's nephew or Uncle Sam's nephew for that matter. So here cadets of one of my courses are hamming up a little bit for the camera. Lots of hard work but also I think People developed many close friendships there, as I did, particularly with flight instructor Harold Morgenstern. And those who survived, now here comes Carl Chambers again, some of his students. The camp had a, the uh, school had a mascot. We see the mascot marching along with this parade, and when he died and went to that great dog pound in the skies, a suitable successor was obtained. Fortunately, the rain on this day occurred before the Wings Parade. In February 1943, I believe it was, we didn't fly for about two weeks because the rain came down almost steadily for that period. And we had to do a lot of extra flying late hours to make up for the time missed. So the cadets of one of my courses are here going to receive their wings, and the Americans had, a, a had an advantage, actually. Not only could they wear the U.S. Army Air Corps wings, but they wore with pride the Royal Air Force wings, as I did myself, as the flight instructors did, and I'm proud to say that I still have my wings in the flight instructor's shoulder patch. So as I view these scenes, I'm certainly filled with nostalgia, and indeed pride, as I have indicated earlier. A good pilot here, fine example of British manhood. People who have viewed this film as I make this commentary in my office at the Physics Department, Oklahoma State University on 8 September 1983, People who have viewed the film have wondered how these cadets could keep these caps on their head. Well, we see them bouncing or resting on the ears here. Okay, you're happy about it. Show your happiness here at having achieved your wings. That's it. Oh, the father of Bill Wing. Bill was a flight instructor at the school. His father was a naval veteran of World War I and re-enlisted, even though he was well in his 40s, and saw active duty in World War II. Proud day indeed when wings are pinned on, and the long grind, the hard work is over, and the just rewards received. Flight line. I'm certain everyone who sees a picture of an AT-6 or movies of them 
or sees one flying, as in the Confederate Air Force here in the States, everyone who's flown one of these airplanes would like to get his hands on the control stick again. They were indeed a beautiful airplane to fly, as all these cadets, I'm certain, would attest. It was my privilege to have attended the 3BFTS reunion in Miami, Oklahoma in October of 1982. And I renewed many friendships there, people I had not seen for 40 years. Copies of this video cassette will be sent to some of those friends. And if anyone who views this cassette, these films, would like copies, they can be had at cost. By the way, here go the BT-13s, the basic trainers, which were phased out midway in the program. And many of us thought it was not wise to go directly from the primary trainers to advance, and skipping basic. But considering the flight characteristics of the BT-13, it was indeed a wide choice and students progressed nicely. Primary trainer PT-19 here, just airborne after takeoff from the main field. I'll get back to commentary shortly about how copies of this cassette may be contained, obtained by those who are desirous of doing so. So obviously here, formation flying. And these formations were tight. Carl Chambers, the instructor in the rear cockpit here. And uh, the other student, plane we'll see shortly, is one of my solo students. So those who flew there knew that the wing tip was to be lined with the horizontal stabilizer, the wings almost overlapping on occasion, overlapping, very tight formation. Gunnery practice, camera guns. Later on, we will see Vincent Tennant in action, shooting uh, a film, the gunnery practice, and as I mentioned before, Vincent's film is appended, his gunnery film is appended to the end of my movies here, and you will see them in a few moments. These views were taken from the rear cockpit of the AT-6, with the seat reversed. change in formation from the V to echelon. Excellent job, excellent. And here, my student is holding that wing right on that horizontal stabilizer. Doggone, nice job, nice work. Wish I could identify that man, doing 150 miles per hour here. Brief glance at the instrument panel. In 1945, uh, near the end of the war, all of the advanced trainers were mobilized in a maneuver. Some played the part of bombers in formation, others in, played the part of fighters. I was assigned to the fighter group. We were to find the bomber formations, here they are, and we were to attack them with our fighters using camera guns, and uh, shortly here we're going to be making a dive. There we go. We've made the attack on the bomber formation, now we're breaking away. It was not always possible to obtain color film during World War II, so some of the scenes here are in black and white. In spite of the age of the film and the rather primitive quality of the cameras and the amateurishness, so to speak, of the photographer, they are fairly well preserved here. So another pass at the bomber formation these scenes here are east of Benito, Oklahoma. There's the formation down below. So we've just made another pass, pulling up and away. Another, cli another close formation flight here, obviously dual. And I like this silhouetted scene, backlighting effect of the sun, and my student here is holding that baby right on the money. Another echelon formation. Okay, let's move that wing up, get it on that stabilizer. Formation takeoff from number two field. Not the smoothest surface in the world, as is evident here. Come on, get the gear up. There it comes. Stage house, number two field. 
background there. Not too bad, a little overcorrecting on the wing bank. As, oh, here is Vincent Tennant in his gunnery practice. So he is shooting movies of the target craft, and I'm shooting movies of him. And had I known that eventually I would have seen those movies which he took, those added on to this film, I would have done some waving from the rear cockpit, which would indeed have shown up on those films. Another one of my group of students, ready to sign Form 1, I believe it was. Now we're coming up onto the Gunnery Elms Vincent Tennant, number 25 course. These black and white films, cheap quality films, are in an excellent state of preservation considering all factors. Here are the target ship, I'm in the rear cockpit, gear down to slow down the target ship so the closure rate will be fairly rapid. And as the students who went through this gunnery practice know, the lead of the target depended upon the range and the closure rate. And of course when the attacker is just astern of the target aircraft, the target should be centered as is the case there. To continue my earlier comments, if people desire to obtain copies of this film on video cassette, they can contact me as follows. Leon W. Schrader, S C H R O E D E R, Route 5, Box 136, Stillwater, Oklahoma. 74074 USA and they will be duplicates will be made and shipped at cost of processing plus shipping here the target aircraft is in turn and Vincent is doing an excellent job keeping that target just tangent to the sighting ring beautiful job Vincent I'm still amazed here these kids are less than 200 hours flying time Look at that. I'm glad I don't have a, a film, a gunnery film. Had I been asked to take one, I'm certain it wouldn't have been as good as Vincent's here. So may I now express my appreciation for having had the opportunity to serve the war effort with British cadets, with the British officers associated there. And I know that the output of these gallant, valiant men hastened the end of the war. So with these words, I'll sign off now. These tape recordings, uh, this commentary comes from my office in the physics department at Oklahoma State University in Stillwater on 8 September 1983. So, so long to all the pilots. Keep your nose down, your speed up, and on final approach, check UMPFF.